The Beer Industries Three Tier System. Kirs Kirsten, I'm sorry, how do you say your last name? Kriner is a distributor of sales management at Miller Coors, responsible for a team of sales and representatives in the Milwaukee market. In her last six years with the company, she has also held positions in pricing and analytics and chain sales management. Prior to joining Miller Coors, Kristen held various marketing positions with Maniax, a vendor in, of the Mazda car company and also with Team Enterprise as a promotional team manager. Kristen holds a bachelor's in science degree from the University of Wisconsin La Crosse and a master's in business administration MBA from Concordia, or Concordia University. She is also a member of the network of executive women. So let's give it up for you. Let's give it up. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. What's your name? I'm Dagny. Dagny. Oh, and also, I didn't have a bio for you, so I'm sorry, but welcome to Whitewater, and we'll you. enjoy your presentation. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, everybody. I'll do my own bio. Oh, can you guys hear me? Okay. I'll do my own bio. I'm um, Dagny Rapisard. I met lots of you um, out at the Career Corner. Thanks so much for coming. Many of you um, came from a long ways. We really appreciate it. I am the Human Resources Manager for Miller Coors um, in the Great Lakes region. If you heard my spiel earlier, we have five regions. We're going to talk about that here in a second uh, during the presentation. I've been a Human Resources Manager my whole career, so many of you asked me what uh, you should do to think about uh, um, getting into a career. I had no idea I wanted to be a human resources manager, but I fell into it. And I've been doing it for 15 years. Went to work for General Electric out of college um, at the University of Nebraska. So any of you um, Big Ten fans uh, were happy to be in the Big Ten. I went to school in Lincoln, uh, quickly went out to uh, Arizona, became an HR manager for a small manufacturing company that made ultrasound equipment. That company was bought by General Electric, and I started my career in um, what I call big corporate uh, America roles. I uh, went to Miller, or went to, to uh, left Phoenix, Arizona, which also some of you may think is a little strange to go to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and uh, have, en have enjoyed Milwaukee for eight years. I stayed at GE for another couple of years in Milwaukee and went to Miller, and it was a lot of fun changing from metal equipment to beer sales. So um, had a great career, and I'm very happy to be talking to you um, all today. We're going to have a little fun with uh, some history about Miller and Coors. If you know much about our organizations, we have very rich history, and I thought we'd start with that and, and share some of that with you so that you understand um, why recruiting for Miller Coors is so much fun and why you should consider coming to work for us um, as you begin your careers. We'll also tell you a little bit about uh, the products that we have, where we sell, and how we sell our beer. We'll also talk a little bit about how we develop our employees and how we recognize and reward our team. So that's going to be uh, what we're going to spend about 30 minutes on. And then we definitely would like to open it up to each of you for questions. So that'll be the plan. Um, many of you hear the name Miller and Coors together and maybe don't realize that we were once uh, separate companies. So Miller has a very rich history. It was founded by Frederick Miller. It is in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It's an amazing um, beer city for those of you who are either from there or have a chance to go there. At one time, Miller, Schlitz, Pabst, Blatz, Strohs, yep. <laughs> five really iconic beer companies all called Milwaukee home. If you think about how everything has changed in today's world, I'm standing right in front of your presentation. If everything's changed in today's world, consolidation uh, change has uh, all but, um, you know, put those folks off the map. In, in, in interesting ways, we talk about PAPS in a second, but Miller's is still the only organization that still functions. PAPS is interesting, and I'll digress for a second. PAPS, um, if you've been over in Milwaukee, they're turning the PAPS brewery into this amazing um, place. We actually make their beer for them. So they're still a company that markets and sells beer, but they don't have a brewery, so the Miller Brewing Company became a uh, third-party consultant to PAPS. But founded in, in, 1850, or, yeah, in 1855, um, really an amazing organization. And Frederick Miller's view of the world was to have the best quality and, and, and really have carried that through with the Miller tradition. Coors, very, very rich family history. We still have many of the Coors family members working for us today. 
I believe they're fourth and fifth generation Coors in our, in our organization today. Founded in 1873, so just a few years after Miller. Also had the same um, belief in, in innovation and quality. And you'll, you'll, if you do any research on this, you'll actually find out that um, the Coors organization created the aluminum can um, way back in the day. So a lot of people think Anheuser-Busch comes out with all these great things because they're so big. But Miller and Coors actually are more innovative and more creative, and then Anheuser-Busch tends to follow suit. So great, great history. In 2008, we decided to create a company called Miller Coors. Um, and we did that because Miller had about 20% of the market share. Coors had maybe 15% of the market share. We were the number two, number three player behind Anheuser-Busch. And to compete, and to continue to compete effectively, we came together. And it's been a very powerful, um, I don't know if marriage is the right word, but joint venture for sure. Um, different cultures, different histories, but all rooted in the same thing, which was selling beer and selling really good quality beer. So we became Miller Coors. We had a lot of fun. Um, both Kristen and I are from the Miller side, so we maybe can't tell as many Coors stories, but it became uh, an organization um, rich and deep in brands, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Um, we have nine, I'm going to say ten breweries for any of you guys up in Eau Claire with Chippewa Falls. We have ten breweries um, throughout our organization. This presentation is going to focus mostly on the commercial side of our organization, the sales and marketing, but you can't lose sight of the fact that if we don't have product, we can't sell it. So I wanted to make sure you knew that we had the different breweries across the United States. Coming into the Coors and Miller joint venture really helped us with our supply chain being able to have beer closer to the market, and you'll see the different uh, locations. Milwaukee, uh, Trenton, um, Virginia, and, uh, Eden, North Carolina, Albany, Fort Worth, Golden, and Irwindale. We have, Lion and Klugels has uh, two breweries. One is up in Chippewa Falls, where we do still make beer. People ask me that all the time. We do still make a lot of beer in Chippewa Falls. We do also make that beer other places. Uh, we couldn't get that much summer shandy out the door if we didn't. Uh, and then we have a nice pilot brewery on 10th Street in, in uh, Milwaukee. I mentioned the five sales regions. We break up the United States into five. A lot of you guys in Wisconsin think, you know, Miller's Milwaukee, and we're glad that you think that, but it's actually all across the United States. I was telling a couple of the groups I talked to, we even have folks selling beer in Alaska and Hawaii. Um, we have beer being sold outside the United States, too, but Miller Coors is a U.S.-based organization only. We have five regions. I starred the Great Lakes region because that's the region you're sitting in, and that's the region that I support, but we have the Northeast, Southeast, Central, and Pacific regions. As we talk about careers with Miller Coors, a lot of the careers we have are going to be in these regions, home-based, living out of your home, working out of your car. Our corporate headquarters is in Chicago, Illinois, so marketing, corporate um, functions like finance and IS and human resources, um, strategy all sit in the corporate offices in Chicago. I thought I'd put up a fake org chart for you to see the different positions that we have. Many of you ask me, what am I going to do if I get into the Miller Coors organization? Um, we have so many different opportunities within Miller Coors and business backgrounds, sales backgrounds, marketing backgrounds. I met many of you with communications backgrounds. Those are the kind of um, business degrees and, and, and focuses that we look for. Um, but every region, so the five regions, has a regional vice president. Um, every region is broken into what we call management units, so you have a general manager over every management unit. Um, in that general manager world, you have analysts, you have distributor sales managers, which Kristen is, is, is one of, and she'll tell you more about her role. Um, you have on-premise sales reps, which I talked to many of you about today. Those are the positions that go out into our bars and our restaurants and really get the consumer to think about our product differently. Um, we have chain. We have a chain organization. In, in my region alone, we have almost 200 people that just sell into our chains. So think about Walmarts and Kroger's and um, Pick and Save and Buffalo Wild Wings and you, know, you go on an airplane with Delta or you stay at a Marriott. All of those are chains that we try to leverage big buying powers to go in and sell our product. So we have chain account managers, sales, chain, uh, chain account executives, we have category managers. I said to some of you, when you walk into your grocery store, believe it or not, there is rhyme and reason to where the beer is, where it sits on the floor, where it is in the cooler. And we fight for that space. We go in and we tell the retailer why it's better to put Miller Lite in one spot versus Bud Light. Right? It's an amazing piece of work that gets done with all the analytics that go into our business. And then on the business development side, we have marketing. And I talked to a lot of you about brand marketing, um, channel marketing, which is channel specific to, to a grocery store, to a convenience store, to a liquor store, to mass merchandise. Because you sell beer, and just really any product, differently in each of those stores. 
We have revenue management and finance. We have to make money doing this or we wouldn't be able to stay in business. So we have a, a big contingent that even though they are finance and analytical backgrounds, they're working differently to sell our beer using pricing, using analytics, using data. And then we have an entire sales operations function that works back with our supply chain. I can't have the sales guys out there selling beer we don't have. So many of you might that are 21 might like our aluminum pint. Many people do. Um, and we've got a shortage of those. They're, they're very, very popular. So the more I have folks going in and selling into the, the stores a product that we can't, can, can't produce, it doesn't match. So we have a whole sales operation. Up in the right corner, right corner for you guys? Yeah, right corner. Uh, you'll see a thing called Tenth and Blake. Um, many of you I talked to today, and many of you just know that there's an explosion in craft and import beers. We created an organization inside of Miller Coors called Tenth and Blake. Tenth comes from the 10th Street Brewery I just told you about um, at Line of Coolers, and Blake is the street that the Blue Moon Brewing Company is on in Colorado. So Tenth and Blake. It is our craft beer company within Miller Coors, selling Lineys, Blue Moon, Killian's. Um, let me see if I can do a couple more. Pilsner, Kell, Peroni, Foster's. Um, we have human resources. So even though I'm a human resources person, I've been that my entire career. I'm a beer salesman too, right? So I come in, I sell to each of you. I talk about our organization. We have legal, we have corporate affairs. So you can imagine, in totality, we have about 8,000 employees that span across the entire company. Um, so it's a pretty big organization. <coughs> I didn't put our sales and stuff, but we're about an $8 billion company. Um, so just to give you a sense of how, how large we are. And I think I've really talked through a lot of this, but we have all these commercial functions, sales development. I mean, as you see, the general managers sit in the middle and everything goes around them. So it really should give you a sense that joining a company like Miller Coors or being part of a company like Miller Coors gives you a lot of opportunity to grow, both in career advancement, moving around in jobs, but something that we're really strong in, and you'll see in a minute, is projects and getting people involved from different um, sides of the business. And I'm going to turn it over to Kristen to tell you more about our world. OK, hi, guys. I'm going to talk a little bit about how we sell beer. So Dagny gave you a really nice background on where the company comes from, how we're structured, what we look like. Now we're going to tell you a little bit about the fun side of it, and that's how we actually get the beer into your hands if you are 21, um, when you're in the bars, the restaurants, places like that. So essentially, what a lot of people don't know about the beer industry is that it's a three-tier system. And what that means is that we have the brewer, which is us, we brew the beer and we market the beer. And we have the distributors, who are an independent company on their own that we sell the beer to. And the distributors, in turn, turn around and sell the beer to the restaurants, the bars, the pick and saves, any of the grocery stores you might buy your products at. So that's the one thing that's really unique about us is most of, a lot of companies sell their products directly to the retailer. So you know some of the other companies, like the chip companies and things like that, they sell directly from the person that produces it right to the stores. We have this middle tier in there, which are distributors. We're going to tell you a little bit about why our distributor exists and how we work with them. Because keep in mind that they are an independent business person on their own. So they do sell separately. They have other brands in their warehouse. If you walk into a distributor warehouse, they have Miller Coors brands, which might make up 80% of their business. But that other 20% is made up of things like Heineken or Corona or things that aren't necessarily our brands because they do pick up things from other places. You usually don't find Anheuser-Busch in their warehouses, though, just so you know that. That's usually not a common thing. It does happen. There are a few out there that have Miller and Anheuser-Busch, um, but it's not common. So we have this great portfolio of brands that we have out there, and it is endless. As you guys have noticed, every time you go in somewhere, you probably see a new brand, a new name, a new flavor of something. And that a lot of it's been coming not only from us, but from some of the other craft brewers in the state. What we really do is we have a big focus on six of our big brands, which really drives our business. And a lot of them are up here. Miller Lite, Coors Light, obviously our two leading brands in our company. High Life, Keystone, and then Miller Genuine Draft and Blue Moon are kind of our six key core focus brands that a lot of our investment goes into. But beyond that, we have a lot of local brands that we put a lot of investment into if it's right for the area. So for instance, what brand do you guys think we might be really hard on in Wisconsin that we put a lot of effort and energy into? Lineys. <laughs> so Lineys is a big brand for us because it's brewed here. It's that Wisconsin feel. It's the one brand that everybody puts a connection to, especially if they're from Wisconsin and live in Wisconsin. So on the West Coast, Lineys might not be as big of a brand. We have a brand out there called Henry Weinhardt's, which is a little more close to home, a brand for them that they might put a little more focus in. So our core six, beyond that, you know, we, we by market pick certain brands that fit in the right areas. 
So in order for us to sell all these brands, we have to have a great network of people. Not only our distributor network, but we have to have a great sales network, marketing network, and as Dagny said, all our behind the scenes people, supply chain, everything else that goes into it. So where this is important is, Dagny touched on, we have a, a new program we started back in May, which was a sales management program. We hired 250, I believe, across the country. We have six of them currently here in Wisconsin. And it's really an entry level position for our company where we kind of teach you the business from the ground up. You get a really good experience with marketing, with communication, with sales, and you really get to put a big focus on our distributors. So in my position as a distributor sales manager, I spend 90% of my work week with the distributors, helping them manage the business so that our brands are being marketed properly, they're following through on execution, they're doing everything we're asking them to do with the brands that we've created in our business. The other part of that is our, a lot of our business is in what we call chains. So you'll notice we have regional chains like Aroundies, which is a pick and save, um, some of our smaller Piggly Wigglies, festivals, those are what we call local chains, regional chains, and we have national chains, which are things like Walmart, Meyer, Buffalo Wild Wings, Applebee's. These are a huge percent of our business. As Dagny said, we have a lot of chain people in the industry. Uh, my position prior to the one I'm in now was I was the chain account executive for Walmart and Sam's Club for the state of Wisconsin. So I spent every minute I was in the, in the office or out in the field talking about Walmart and Sam's Club. That was my focus in my business. So that's how big these businesses are for us, is that we have people dedicated to one specific chain day in and day out, which is actually a really interesting job because you really get to learn a lot about that, that business and that chain and how they work and how they function, which is kind of cool because it's a really nice cross-function from your job to other, other opportunities. Um, things like Walmart, it's predicted in five years that they're going to sell 100 million more cases than they're currently selling today of beer. That's how fast Walmart is growing in beer. Walmart is our largest retailer we have right now out there as far as when we look at cases of beer and percentage of sales. Places like Buffalo Wild Wings and Applebee's are what we call on-premise bars restaurants. We spend a lot of time doing promotions. If you guys are in those, I'm sure you see the little table tents with all the specials on them and all the packer ticket giveaways and things like that. So that's really what becomes a fun part of our industry. The other part of our business is really focused on alliances. And this is across the country. We put the ones up here that are more specific to Wisconsin, obviously. But as you move across the country, we have a lot of alliances, whether it be baseball, football, um, different venues that we partner with. These are just a handful of the ones that I'm sure you guys are aware of that we have in Wisconsin. This is another big marketing opportunity for us. You know, we put money into these companies, they invest back in us. Um, it's, a sh it's a shared profit for all of us. Um, the one thing you'll notice, the, the Bucks and the Admirals, if you guys go to the Bradley Center to see any of those games this, this fall, we've rebranded with Coors Light. So when you used to go to the Bradley Center, everything was Miller Light. Now when you walk in this year, everything's gonna be Coors Light. Um, so it's really a way for us to get our brands out there, tie with a great partner who already has a great stable base in Wisconsin, and help develop our brands even further. So the way we work with our sales reps and our distributors and we bring it all together with our alliances and we keep everything focused and aligned is what we call our big rocks. And we have a set of them every year that we line up. They change slightly from year to year, but for the most part they tend to be the same. And these are kind of our buckets of what we focus on in our industry. So we are accelerating above premiums. So what that means basically is our Blue Moons and our Lineys and all of our new craft brands that we're introducing next year, we really put a focus on that and we ask the distributors to go after those brands, market them right, get them in, you know, take off that competitive tap line and put on that Blue Moon or that Line and Kugels. We have things like on-premise, which I talked about, the reps that um, are working for me right now are all on-premise focused. They're going into bars, restaurants, they're selling, they're communicating, they're helping build our brands, which you know we couldn't do. I couldn't get to every bar and restaurant um, in the Milwaukee market, so I have four of them out there kind of spreading that and doing that for us, which is a great help. And then our distributors. So we really get our distributors aligned with these big racks, and we ask that they go out and help us sell these, these different categories that we have. We want them to focus on premise. We want them to focus with C-stores. Um, C-store business is another big business for us. One share point is worth eight million cases for us in a C store, in a convenience store. So it just gives you a feel for how much beer we actually do in, in just one channel of our market. So that's kind of how we set up our business and what things look like. And I'm gonna pass it back to Dagny and let her finish out. Thanks, Tristan. We could talk about beer all day. I'm sure you guys would like us <laughs> to talk about beer. Bring beer next time, right? But uh, it is amazing when you think about just the little snapshot we gave you I think we have over 
30 brands. Um, the number of packages that we sell is ridiculous as you guys start going into liquor stores or grocery stores or convenience stores. I mean, to think that that kind of business is in a convenience store, you guys, that's singles. People are walking in and buying one big beer or two big beers or a six pack. They're not buying a case. So then you have the grocery stores. I mean, it's just an amazing business. And as a consumer, you think, I am going to go get my beer. It's easy. I'm going to get my Miller Lite. I'm going to grab some Blue Moon. I walk in. For us, it's very complex, and it makes the business world of selling beer really exciting. I wanted to put up our Winning in Beer 2.0. This is our strategy. Um, you'll find at Miller Coors, everything has something to do with beer, so you've got the bottle cap in the middle. Um, but really what it is, is these are the five things that we focus on every year. And each year we tweak it, and we figure out what makes sense for these things. But it's really about earning customer preference. It's certainly about embracing responsibility. It's about f elevating our brands, making sure people understand the intrinsic value of each of our brands, um, fueling growth. We have to grow to succeed. Um, people always say to me, well, beer, everybody's buying beer. I'm like, everyone's buying stuff, yeah, but how do we get them to buy ours? As you guys um, become legal age drinking consumers, you are going to go try a martini, and you're going to try the drink of the day, and you're going to try a Mike's Hard Lemonade, and you're going to try Stella, and you're going to try an Anheuser, and there's just so much out there. We have to continue to fuel our growth with our brands. And of course, I'm the human resources manager, so I had to make the engaged people one a little bit bigger, um, which is really about what we do every day to bring people to Miller Coors to do the other four. It's developing and attracting a diverse workforce. It's focusing on capability and, and development. And then it's really creating an inclusive and flexible and safe working environment. And people say to me, safe? Well, if I'm working in my home, what does that mean? I have 10 breweries. We have some of the safest manufacturing facilities in the country. And it's really prideful to know you work in that kind of organization. And so it's really important that we continue to, to look at how we're going to sell beer through our strategies that you see behind you or behind yeah, behind me. Um, responsibility, I, I would be remiss if I didn't spend just a couple minutes, especially as many of you become legal drinking age. I mean, it is really important that our product is done and, and, and consumed in a responsible manner. And I threw a few things up here that we really believe in as far as um, creating an, an environment where people can go out on, on big major holidays and enjoy the product and have a free ride home. Um, we do lots and lots of work for the water. I mean, we do clean up rivers. We do water responsibility. We have sustainability reports. It's really important. Beer is 90, I'm not going to the number right, 90% water, 92% water. So we are giving back in all of our communities, our brewery communities, our sales communities in, in the water network. And just the whole idea around um, great beer, great responsibility. Um, we have really um, strict um, drunk driving rules in place for our employees. Um, we want you to be responsible, we want you to enjoy our product, we want you to take a cab. And there's just so many things that we do for both our employees as well as, as uh, the consumers that we support. Um, you know, you've heard Kristen and I for the last 30 or so minutes, I'm gonna keep time here. My, my timekeepers are doing a great job over there. I mean, we just want you guys to leave with the idea that we build a winning team culture um, at Miller Coors. We, we try to do things um, you know, that, that are smart. We try to do things that are simple. We try to be very focused and disciplined because you've got a sense from Kristen it's not easy. You have a retailer that wants this. You have a distributor that wants this. You have a consumer that wants this. So we have to be smart inside of Miller Coors. Um, one thing that we have is individual accountability. Um, if you came to work for us or you were part of working with the Miller Coors organization, we are a culture that says, if I say I'm going to do that, I'm going to do it. It's just that simple. I take that individual accountability. I, I say I'm going to get to my distributor that day, I do. I say I'm going to get something back to the retailer that day, I do. Um, we provide a lot of coaching. We have great leaders that um, we believe in lots of one-on-one -on -one type of environment so that you can, you can hear from your managers how you're doing. You can get coaching. And then, quite frankly, we work in the beer business, right? So we have some fun. Um, we celebrate, we enjoy the products that we do. I mean, Kristen put up there, we have Summerfest, and we have the Brewers, and we have the Packers, and it's just a fun environment. So um, I think when you kind of look around the winning big culture, it's, it's, it's how we think about things. And if you think about it in a sports analogy, it is, it is playing to win. I'll leave you with a couple last slides, and we'll take up some questions. Um, we have what we call our critical success factors. Um, these are the six things that um, each employee at Miller Coors takes 
to heart. It's part of our performance review process. It's part of how we interview. It's part of how we speak. And I really like the, the different ones. I'll just read them out loud, and you guys can you know, read the definitions. But passion for beer, it, you, you don't have to drink beer to work at Miller Coors. The, what you'll read about this is it's passion for our brands. It's passion for what we do in the industry. It's passion for turning the Bradley Center into a Coors Light venue. And that's really cool for us. And if, for those of you, when you get to Bradley Center, it looks fantastic. Um, cu commitment to customers, a bias for action. Look, you guys understand Anheuser-Busch is 50% of the beer sales. So we're probably never going to get up to there, but we're going to outthink them. We're going to be faster than them. We're going to have a commitment to our customers. We're going to have a bias for action, and we're going to have a heck of a lot more fun doing it than they do. We connect with our people. We have pride and integrity. And the last one I think is really important, too, is we have a thirst for learning. Um, I have a lot of people that have sold beer for a long time, and I will tell you, every day they look for new ways to do it. Every way they think about how they can better themselves to sell beer out in the market. So those are our critical success factors. Um, we talked a little bit about development um, as, as people come into the business. We, we leverage people's strengths. We build on your opportunities. Um, we definitely don't just do classroom. Uh, we do have Miller Coors University. You see the little definition down here. It's really cool. It's an investment we made in, in education of our employees about three years ago. Took a whole part of the Milwaukee campus. Uh, when we moved a lot of our folks to Chicago, it left some space. We took a whole um, area of our Milwaukee campus and turned it into Miller Coors University. We have fantastic um, programming there. But it is outside the classroom. It's, it's getting the coaching, the mentoring, getting the projects, getting the experience. We have one-on-ones. And you guys will find, if you ever came to work for us, if you talked to Chris and I long enough, you've got to prioritize your development and your, your work at Miller Coors. There's so much that can be done. And again, if you would have asked me this eight years ago when I started at Miller, I said, Spear. I don't know, it's pretty easy. And now I found it quite complex and quite exciting. My last slide is really just to show how it all ties together. So we have a performance-based culture. Um, we have potential. We know each of you that came to work for us or all of our employees have potential to do, to do different things and to grow the business. Um, we love development. It's how we do things. It's how we want to continue to grow folks. And it really leads to our success. So this is the culture. If you think about that winning team beer, winning yeah, team beer culture, it really boils down to this, performance, potential, uh, development for success. So with that, I will open it up. I think I have a couple minutes, like five, for questions. Oh, like 15, wow. Now you guys have pressure. You have to find 15 minutes of questions, yeah. I can hear you fine, but I'll repeat the question for you. <laughs> uh, but what are some things that you guys are looking to do to be able to reach, reach that market and kind of break into, because, I mean, we're not shy. We love Rambler. We, yeah. We're not shy. We're not shy. We're not shy. So what is something that you guys want to do in that space? Yes, let me repeat the question, and um, I'll let Kristen start, and I'll, I'll, I'll jump in. But uh, So the questions are really around our big rocks. You guys see that, as Kristen mentioned, these are the focus areas we have in Hispanic. We call it Hispanic 365, which is really um, recognizing and understanding the Hispanic consumer. And I'd actually say multicultural consumer um, all year round, right? So there's things that we do during certain events or certain things. But really, one of the focuses Miller Coors wants to have is how do we reach that, that Hispanic or multicultural consumer on a regular basis? So I'll let you start, and I can jump so, in. Oh, you're going to start that one. So part of the way we've done that is actually back in May with this new sales representative program that we started. Um, there was a couple different areas to this program. One is millennial, which is most of the ones that we have in Wisconsin because it's more of the millennial market. The other part of it was a multicultural or Hispanic rep, and there's a lot of those. We have a lot of them in Texas and the areas that are very heavy in Hispanic culture. Um, I'm hoping we will get one eventually in the you know, Milwaukee market because we, we continue to grow in that area in Milwaukee, so that's something we hope to see in the future. But in the markets where we are already very heavy in that population, we already have, have implemented those reps, and we have those placed in the markets. They're going in. They're interacting. Most of them are bilingual. They can communicate with a lot of them, which also helps the relationship building. And then we're very focused on the programming. So if you have, um, if you see our Miller Lite programming and our Coors Lite programming, we have kind of the everyday stuff, and then we also have the Hispanic or the multicultural programming. So we spend a lot of time with Chivas and a lot of the American Soccer League things that you see around here, and the stuff you'll see, you know, overseas. We bring it all 
together and we mix it all up and we, we put it all out in the market. So, you know, you might see a, a sign in one bar that's just your Miller Lite, but if you go into a Hispanic account, it'll have the Chivas, you know, Miller Lite with, with their information on and, and their culture on it. So it really helps us kind of tie everything together. And it is, that's the reason it's up here. It's, it's become a huge focus for our company, so. I just add that the part of the millennial rep, or sorry, part of the, uh, the multicultural rep is to really understand that consumer. Right, that's part of it. You have to understand, you mentioned they're very loyal, very loyal consumers. And so really understanding the consumer, and we found that the soccer resonates really broadly across the US. So we've, we've, we've leaned deep into soccer, which is why I didn't even realize there's a soccer ball on there until I looked up there. <laughs> um, I guess I should see what the little pictures look like. Um, but soccer is a big, a big thing, and, and just getting that focus, and, and I think the programming for next year is going to be really good. You guys will see, I actually gave you a sneak peek. These are 2013 Big Rocks. Um, they're a little different this year, but that, that's really the focus we have on, on the Hispanic slash multicultural. Question? Okay. How does Miller compete against budgeted beers uh, such as uh, Pabst Blue Ribbon, Bush, Bush Light and Rolling Rock in a college target market? Oh, good question. You probably should have had, did you have Bush Light? Yeah, you said Bush Light, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I'll start, and I know Kristen has a lot of answers <laughs> to this one. I mean, it's a, so just comp competition in general in a college market, because college age students, you guys are so used to so many different things, it's fantastic, but it's also really difficult for, cust for businesses like ours to get you to be brand loyal. So um, certainly programming, as Kristen talked about, the millennial um, near campus reps that we've put into place are gonna be big. Um, Keystone, of course, is one of our big fighters to Pabst and to, I know you guys are laughing. I hear laughing over on Keystone. <laughs> Keystone, that's my favorite. Uh, um, so Keystone's one of our big ones. Miller High Life, I think you mentioned Miller High Life. What a fantastic beer, you know, a beer that has that retro feel and can, and can come back into it. So getting more, revelant, rev, more prevalent uh, with, with some of those brands um, are certainly some of the focuses we have. And I'll touch on, you, let you touch on some of the programming that you're doing. Locally. So a big part of the budget um, competition obviously starts with pricing, believe it or not. So we think about everything as marketing and, you know, all the cool, fun stuff, the flashy signs, everything that goes into it. But really it comes down to marketing, or to pricing, sorry. So when we're working with a retailer, this is that business to business side of it. As At Miller Coors, we're always selling to another business, right? We're selling to our distributors who are in turn selling to our retailers. And then sometimes we're selling to our retailers or to the venues or the bucks or the brewers or whatever it is. But part of it is, is a big part of pricing, that, that budget or that lower level um, college consumer wants the cheap beer, right? You guys don't want to spend a lot on it. You want something that's you know, cheap but still drinkable and, and easy to take down. So that's where it starts. Um, we really keep focus on the price. So if you know, Bush and the other brands are, are fluctuating, we try to fluctuate with them and stay in line. Because um, if we lose on price, we probably lose everything else. Beyond price, once we get the price aligned and we get it right, the next thing we move into is to Dagny's point, it's the marketing part of it. So it's the Keith Stone with Keystone. It's you know the, the different things we've done with High Life. We've done a lot with brewers and you know win a makeover your lawn and, and things like that. So a lot of it comes down to marketing and who can get your attention and who can put the better marketing play out there. And I think our below premium brands, our best, our Keystone, um, have all done a really good job of that in the last you know year, year and a half. We've really kind of turned around our budget brands. And part of it is you know that near campus programming. We try to create programs for near campus areas that are different than what we might do in a downtown Milwaukee or you know an outstate you know kind of Delafield, Waukesha suburb area. We really create. We think about what is that college consumer, um, that near campus consumer want, and we create our pro programming specifically to that market. And then when you step outside that market, you might see a totally different program for Keystone. Yeah, and I think we touched on the millennial um, on-premise rep, the multicultural on-premise rep, and we do have near campus on-premise reps. And we got away from near campus for a while. The big alcohol beverage companies uh, moved away from, from near campus concerning about you know, marketing and, and perhaps promoting beer to the under 21, but it's a real focus for us to get back to the campuses to, again, better understand the consumer and make sure that we are relevant, as, as Kristen mentioned. We have time for one last question. Oh, I see one hand over there. Oh. Why did you decide to rebrand the uh, Bradley Center to Coors? Say again? Why did you decide to rebrand the Bradley Center to Coors? I can take it. Okay. I, I <laughs> 
So part of it is, like I talked about, alliances are a big part of our business. Um, in Wisconsin especially, because we are a local brewery, so if you go to St. Louis, obviously they have more of the alliances in St. Louis because they are the local brewery there. And with all of our big alliances, we obviously try to spread things across. And when, before we became one company, um, Coors didn't have a lot tied to alliances. They did, you know, out in, with the Rockies out in Golden and Colorado, they would have their alliances in some of their home markets. But in a market like Wisconsin, Coors Light wasn't tied to anything because it wasn't a hometown beer. It wasn't looked at in that manner. And we at Miller Light had already had Brewers, Bucks, Packers, everything kind of tied in. We had five, 10, 15 year contracts signed with these alliances. So when we merged, we were given the opportunity to kind of flip some of these around. And really it came down to kind of spreading the love across our brands. We have, you know, Packers and Brewers with Miller Lite. Um, Bucks had always been Miller Lite, but the focus had been lost with Bucks. You know, the Bucks weren't doing the greatest in the world. Um, they were losing some, some visibility. So we thought, you know, let's help them bring it back and let's reinvigorate it with one of our new, new brands that just became a part of our company, you know, just a little over three years ago. So we're letting our distributors focus on Miller Lite with the other alliances, and now they have something new with Coors Light to focus on. So in this industry, it's really about changing and keeping up and, and moving, and that's what we had to do, um, not only for our brand to keep Coors Light moving, because it's becoming a very big brand, as most of you probably know, but to, in turn, Bucks is a partner of ours. We're trying to find new ways to help the Bucks, you know, kind of reinvigorate, you know, their team and, and their venue and the things they have with them, so. Guys, thank you very much for inviting us. <laughs> All right, thank you, Kristen. Thank you, Dagny. That was a great presentation on the beer industry and sales. It's awesome.